Welcome to the Wisdom That Breathes channel. Across all our platforms, we try to share wisdom which is relevant and accessible to everyone. But on this particular platform, we go deeper into some of the ancient principles found within the scriptures. If you find some of the terminology difficult or inaccessible, then go over to our Keshava Swami YouTube channel where you'll be able to find other content which is perhaps more relatable. Thank you and enjoy the wisdom that breathes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna So before I begin, I beg for the permission and blessings of all the Vaishnavas, my seniors, uh, with their blessings and permission, we'll proceed. Happy to be here. Back to London tomorrow. <laughs> Back on the road, we were in Vrindavan Dham for a few weeks. One great personality, he told me many years ago, every year you have to disconnect for some weeks then you can connect back with the world. So every year I try to disconnect from the world, go to Sri Vrindavan Dham. Uh, we go as a beggar to beg for some mercy, to try to chant the holy name with some attention, to meet the sadhus, to hear from the saints, and to try to read Srimad Bhagavatam a little bit more deeply. So as they say in English, all good things must come to an end. So after three weeks in Sri Vrindavan Dham and some days here in Delhi, we're back on the road. Um, in some small way trying to serve Srila Prabhupada who just did everything he could. Spent every last bit of energy to spread Krishna consciousness. One devotee said to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, I just want to stay fixed at your lotus feet. Prabhupada said it would be very difficult because I'm always moving. <laughs> yes. Parivraja Gacharya. Srila Prabhupada was always moving, moving. Finding new places, people where he could implant Krishna consciousness. So who are we? Very, very small. Six foot five, but very small. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada is very kind to give us the opportunity. So thank you so much for the opportunity to share something with you. Today I maybe will speak a little shorter and then we can have more questions and answers. Is that okay? Different style. Today is Sunday. We can even extend the class. Okay. Let's see. We can go till 6 o'clock. We can go till 6. Okay, so today we're reading from Canto number 6, chapter number 16, entitled King Chitraketu Meets the Supreme Lord. So, uh, maybe 27 I'll just by myself, and then 28 has the purport, so then we'll do that together. So this is text number 27. Chitraketu stutam vidyam yatha narada bhashitam Dharayam ashushaptaham abhaksha shushamahita Translation Fasting and drinking only water Chitraketu for one week continuously chanted with great care and attention the mantra given by Narada Muni <coughs> ah, it's okay so now we're reading text number 28 uh, responsibly, please. Tata sha shapta da trante Vidyaya dharyamanaya Vidya dhara dipatyam cha Yove pratihatam repa 
सप्तरात्रांते विद्याधरादिपत्यम चे प्रतिहता सप्तरात्रांते विद्याधरादिपत्यम चे प्रतिहता Saptaratra ante at the end of seven nights, vidyaya by the prayers, hariyamanaya being carefully practiced, vidya dhara adipatyam mastership of the vidya dharas as an intermediate result. Cha also lay pay achieved a pratihatam and deviated from the instructions of the spiritual master. Nripa, O King Parikshit. Translation and purple by His Divine Grace, Shila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki. Before we read the verse, just some context. Chitra Ketu has gone through a roller coaster journey. Put your hand up if sometimes you feel like your life is like a roller coaster. <laughs> My advice to you enjoy the ride. <laughs> Chitra Ketu was on a roller coaster. He had everything anyone could ever imagine. He was so happy. But then there was one thing he couldn't get, which was a son. And therefore he became so unhappy. But later on, by the grace of the sages, he received a son. So again, he was so happy. But when his son was born, then the sages told him, your son will be Harsha Shoka. He will be the cause of your 
anxiety. So again, he was plunged into anxiety. Somehow or other, he forgot about it, and he got on with life, and he was very, very happy because everything was going beautifully. But then, the co-wives of his wife who gave the son, the co-queens, they poisoned and killed the son. Again, he was plunged into distress. Later on, the son came back to life and gave him all transcendental knowledge. And again, he was situated in satisfaction. In the sixth canto, Chitraketu says, this world is like a river of names. And waves are coming and going. Waves of good things and bad things. But it's all so-called good things and bad things. Um, a bhala, a manda, a sabha brahm. Good or bad, it's all confusion. Because in the material world, we don't even know what is good or bad. The good things are leading to our downfall, and the downfall is leading to our upliftment. And like this, Chitra Ketu says, it's just a river of names. Therefore, when I used to be in the manor, one devotee said, don't take the illusion too seriously. <laughs> And another devotee used to tell me, if you don't laugh, definitely you will cry. <laughs> so whatever happens, sometimes you just have to laugh and carry on, even when it's difficult. Because we don't know, it's a river of names. Who can understand how Krishna is planning everything? Even Bhishma Dev said to the Pandavas, Nahyasya karhichit papan puman veida vidit sitam even if you think you're a kavi, even if you think you're a philosopher, even if you think you're so learned, muyanti, you will become completely bewildered, baffled, bemused by Krishna's plan because no one can understand how Krishna is planning things. I don't know if any of you play chess. But good chess player means you can think five moves ahead. Champion chess player means you can think ten moves ahead. But Krishna, <laughs> he is moving all the pieces and we have no idea. We go in front of Krishna, we say, Krishna, you are smiling. What's there to smile about? <laughs> it's all falling apart. <laughs> but behind Krishna's plan, mm, very intelligent. Vedaham samadittani vartamana charjana. Krishna knows everything. So Chitra Ketu, he's saying it's just a river of names. And now Chitra Ketu has received the mantra, he's come out of the whole cycle. <laughs> But don't think Chitra Ketu's uh, roller coaster has ended just yet. There's more shocking things to come. Because later on, he's going to commit an offense accidentally. And then he's going to become a demon. There's no end to the ups and downs. But here, Chitra Ketu has received the mantra from Narad Muni, just like all of us received the mantra, isn't it? At one point, you received the Hare Krishna mantra and uh, we've all taken up the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra every day that is our sadhana we chant it at home we chant it on the street one time we were on Harinam in Scotland in UK Scotland is there if you think this rain is bad you haven't seen anything Scotland it rains every day once it was raining we were in Harinam, and one person, he came up to us, some, some public person. He said, I love you guys. You're always singing, you're always dancing, you're always happy, whether it's raining or it's sunny, you're always out here. But I've only got one question. Don't you have any new songs? <laughs> it's not a song. The mantra. <laughs> mantra means you chant again and again. No problem. No need for any new songs. 
So we got the mantra, we're still chanting it. And just in the same way, Chitraketu received the mantra from Narada Muni, Angira Rishi. They were instructing him. And now, as Chitraketu has begun chanting the mantra, certain <coughs> effects are happening. Did you find that when you started chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, life started changing? Isn't it? The devotees, when they first gave you the mantra, they said, don't worry, you don't have to change anything. <laughs> Remain as you are. Just chant a little bit. Just add Krishna. And then finally, so much Krishna has been added, there's nothing else left. <laughs> Therefore, I call the devotees the agents of Vamandev. <laughs> because Vamandev said, no, oh, I don't need much. Just a few steps. <laughs> and then he took over everything. So we realize when we chant the mantra, different things will change in our life. And uh, Chitraketu is also realizing the same thing as he's begun chanting the mantra. Unless he was changing in Chitraketu's life, what has happened? Now he's chanting the mantra. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shilesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki. Translation. O King Parikshit, after only one week, of repeatedly practicing the mantra received from the spiritual master, Chitraketu achieved the rule of the planet of the Vidyadharas as an intermediate product of his spiritual advancement in knowledge. Did that happen to anyone? You didn't get... Uh, Rule of the Vidyadhara planet after chanting 16 rounds. <laughs> but when Chitraketu did, this is what he got. And the Bhagavatam says it was an intermediate product of his practice. Purple. If a devotee, after being initiated, adheres rigidly to the instructions of the spiritual master, he is naturally endowed with the material opulences of Vidya Dara Adipatyam and similar posts as byproducts. Devotional service alone is competent to award a devotee all material power. A pure devotee, however, is never attached to material power, although he gets it very easily without personal endeavor. Chitraketu received this side benefit of his devotional service which he rigidly performed in accordance with the instructions of Narada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Om Ajnati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshor Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Yena Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sakitam Yena Bhutare Svayamaru Patadamayam Dadai Svakadamikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Kapadakamalan Shri Guru Vishnamasa Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahadar Manathan Hidantam Sajivam Sadvetam Sahadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahadar Lita Shri Vishakam E Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Mandu Jagatpate, O Kesha Vipakanda, Raka Kanda Mose, Raka Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vindra Gayeshwari, Vishabha.
extremes. In India you have the highest mountains but then you also have the biggest deserts. In India you have the monsoons but then you can also have the droughts. In India you can have the fabulously rich and you can also have the unspeakably poor. And India is the land of dharma, but also has the most corruption. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to remind you. <laughs> Even Srila Prabhupada, once he told Tamar Krishna Maharaj, I want you to go to India. Tamar Krishna Maharaj said, I'll go to Swarga, I'll go to Narak, I'll go anywhere, but I'm not going to India. <laughs> Prabhupada said, why? He said, because Indians are too tricky. <laughs> to deal with Indians is a very difficult proposition. Prabhupada said, but I'm an Indian. <laughs> Tamar Krishna said, no, no, Prabhupada, not you, not you. Prabhupada said, no, no, you're right. I am very tricky. <laughs> Because I tricked you. I tricked you into becoming Krishna conscious. So India is a tricky place, place of corruption. The first corruption that you learn about when you come to India is when people try to sell you something. The first time I went to Lord Bazaar, I was buying some chagas for the Brahmacharis, a naive Londoner. So he, I said, 20 chadas. So he gave me the price. 20,000, whatever it was. So in the, when he said the price, immediately my brain calculator calculated it in pounds. That's what you do. So I thought, wow, that's a great bargain. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, OK. One devotee was with me. Luckily, he said, oh, relax, relax. <laughs> And then you know what happens after that. <laughs> then the fun begins. <laughs> Krishna Seva, less, you have to do less. No, no, for you I'm not making, no profit, no profit. <laughs> okay, okay, we do 2,000 less. Then you have to start walking out of the shop. Nay, nay, what do I say? You start walking, then he follows you. Come down, come down. Then finally it's 20% of the original price. And you say, okay, chalo. When you go to buy something in India, you have to wait. You have to be patient to get the best thing, the best price. Dear devotees, bhakti is like this. When you begin and you practice spiritual life, the acharyas are telling us that on the journey to prema, many, many other benefits will come. Many other offers will come. Many, many other types of enjoyment or facility will come. And if we're less intelligent, then we'll fall for the side benefit and we'll be happy with that. But if we're wise, then what we'll do is we'll wait and we'll say, no, no, even though these benefits are coming, this is not the real thing. Let me not become too much 
uh, enamored by this. Let me be patient. Let me wait. Let me remain detached and continue walking because there's something much greater at the end that I can get. Just like when the demons and the demigods were churning the milk ocean, then what happened when they were churning the milk ocean? So many amazing things came from the ocean. Uchei Shrava, beautiful celestial horse. A Ravata, beautiful elephant. The Parijata flower, beautiful. The Kostuba gem, beautiful. The Apsaras, beautiful. <laughs> So many beautiful things were coming. Now they could have stopped. Oh, so many things have come. What more could we want? Take it and run. No, no. Continue churning. There's something much more valuable coming. And then eventually who came? Dhanvantari. And Dhanvantari came with the pot of nectar. Then everyone realized, oh, this is Amrita. This is the real thing. So we want the Amrita. The Chaitanya Charita Amrita. The Leela Amrita. The Katha Amrita. The Nam Amrita. The Bhagavata Amrita. The Pem Prem Amrita. That's what you want. But in order to do that, we have to make sure that on the journey, we don't get sidetracked by all the different benefits that may come. Vishwanath Chakravedi Thakur explains in Madhurya Kadambini that we are walking a path from Shraddha to Prem. Ado Shraddha Tata Sadhu Sangotha Bhajana Kriya Tato Nartha Nevriti Shat Tato Nishtha Ruchi Stata Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya. These are the first three steps. And then Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, when you do Bhajana Kriya, when you begin practicing spiritual life, then there are two types of Bhajana Kriya. One type of bhajana kriya is known as anishtita bhajana kriya. And the other type of bhajana kriya is known as nishtita or steady <coughs> devotional service. So in the second shower of the Madhurya Kadambini, Vishwanath Chakvari Thakur explains what are the characteristics of someone who is going through unsteady devotional service. What are the characteristics and the different things that they will experience as they walk this path towards Prema? Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says the first thing is Utsaha Mayi. The first characteristic of someone who's on the path but unsteady, unestablished, is they have an immature enthusiasm. After a few months, a few lectures, and a few visits to the temple, they think, I know everything. I know what to do. My path is easy. Vishwanath Chakrabadi Thakur says, this is an immature enthusiasm that one in the beginning has an overconfidence in themselves that they think, I know it all already. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, later on what happens is the second thing, Ghana Dadala. Ghana Dadala means soon they begin to realize, maybe I'm not as strong as I thought, because Ghana Dadala means thick and thin. In other words, the second characteristic of unsteady devotional service is we go through ups and downs. Some days inspired, some days not inspired. Therefore, these ups and downs, unsteady. Later on, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, another obstacle comes on the path, Vyuda Vikalpa. Vyuda Vikalpa means indecision. 
One on the path of devotional service becomes indecisive. They do not know, should I do this, should I do that? If I do that, my spiritual life will be affected. If I do this, it will also be affected. Confusion. Should I get married? Should I stay a brahmachari? Or should I be a brahmastra? <laughs> Go the middle path. One time they came to Socrates, one person, he said, I don't know if I should get married or not. Socrates said, you definitely, you should get married. He said, why? He said, because if you have a nice marriage, you'll be very happy. And if you have a difficult marriage, don't worry, you'll become a philosopher like me. <laughs> so, but we have all these confusions over decisions. View the vikalpa. It literally means oscillation. This means that we're unsteady, not decisive, not able to take a path. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says the next difficulty, niyamakshama. Niyam means a vow. So he says the next problem on the path is that one is not able to maintain their vows. Their vows become very heavy. All of a sudden, the beads seem to weigh like 20 kgs. <laughs> Chanting 16 rounds in the morning is like weightlifting. <laughs> very difficult. Oh, it's so difficult. Then later on, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, Vishaya Sangara, another obstacle that you will experience on the path is the tendency to always want to enjoy what is out there, what am I missing out on, maybe something I could enjoy which won't affect my Krishna consciousness. The eyes are going in many, many different places to find some immediate gratification. But even Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, even if you come through all of these things, the sixth problem in unsteady devotional service is Taranga Rangini. Actually, it even sounds very nice, no? <laughs> Taranga Rangini is like a very nice, no? Even the sound of the words is like pleasing to the heart. Taranga means waves. And Rangini means playing, playing, playing in the waves. Because what happens is when you come to Krishna consciousness and you start practicing bhakti, many, many side benefits come. People give you respect. Oh, Swamiji. <laughs> you get position. Fame, popularity. Material opulence, prasadam in Govindas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, confession. So, <laughs> what to do? They forced us. <laughs> so many benefits are coming. Daranga Rangini, then we like to play. Oh yes, Krishna consciousness is nice. I like Krishna, I want Prema, but maybe I can play in some of the waves. <laughs> Enjoy a little bit on the journey. After all, Susukam, Gautamavyayam. <laughs> Joyfully perform. Joyfully perform. Oh, don't be so strict. <laughs> so, we want to play in the waves. But it's dangerous. Mm. <coughs> One time Srila Prabhupada was, somehow I think they were going through some zoo or something and there was a small baby tiger. So one of the brahmacharis came, oh, very cute. <laughs> and the brahmachari came, oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> Baba said, yes, smile is like this, looks innocent, looks... Um... <laughs> then, 
So it's very dangerous. Lava, puja, pratasta, adi, jata, upashaka, gan. Kaviraj Goswami says. See, Krishna consciousness is like an ocean. Some people, they just enjoy the ocean from the beach. They like to watch everyone else play in the ocean, in the deck chair, on the beach, Juhu beach. <laughs> then another type of person, they go to the ocean, but they just put their little leg in. It's nice. <laughs> Generally, the old masses are doing like that. <laughs> just a little, little nice on the legs. So some people, uh, they engage in Krishna consciousness like that, a little bit, nice. Don't go too much. <laughs> then some people, they are inside the ocean, surrounded by the ocean, but they're just playing on the surface in the waves. And the interesting thing is, they think, I'm in the ocean. And they are in the ocean, because they're surrounded by the ocean. But what they don't realize is they're still only on the surface. Therefore, Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, you have to become a makara. You understand? Makara? Makara means? Shock. Shock. You have to go deep because the jewels are at the bottom. So, uh, these things are very, very dangerous. Uh, in Taranga Rangini, the Acharyas are saying the main three problems. Number one is uh, lava. When you become a devotee, actually material facility comes. One time they asked Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, why are all the devotees uh, fighting in the Bhag Bazar temple? Isn't it? He received the temple in Calcutta. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he looked at the devotee and he said, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took princes. Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, extremely wealthy. He said, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took princes and he made them into paupers. But what I've done is I've taken paupers and I made them into princes. So much opulence in the Bhag Bazaar temple. Then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, there's going to be a fire. It's going to be a fire. Because where material opulence comes, whenever money comes, things become compromised. Money ruined the educational system. Now people don't learn in university, it's a business. Money ruined the justice system. Whoever's got the money gets the decision they want. Money ruined the health industry. Now they're not interested. They're interested in how to. And money can also ruin the religious institution and the individual who's practicing. Therefore, Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Lapa, very dangerous. Then Chaitanya Charitamrita says, as you practice the journey, puja, respect, very dangerous. Very, very intoxicating. Because when people constantly glorify us, then we can become in the illusion that we have reached that place. And then we stop growing, we stop developing, we, we lose our humility, we lose our hunger. Very, very dangerous. Therefore, respect, it will kill you if you don't know how to digest it. He said that once there was an army, and you know, all the army, when the general comes, respect. So one time there was a fire in the army building. So they were, luckily there were four soldiers on the ground. So they held out a net and they told all the soldiers from the top, jump! So all the soldiers were jumping and they were catching them in the net. And then the general jumped. And as the general was coming down, they all went. <laughs> 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 
finish. Respect will kill you. <laughs> That's a fact. That's what happens. And if the devotee, devotee is always trying to go lower. That's why even the Mayavad conception is so, because it's bringing, it's elevating people to something they're not. See? The Mayavadi will say, so hum. But the devotee will come and say, da so hum. <laughs> and then the Mayavadi will come and put another essay in the front, sada so hum. And then the devotee will come. Da so da so hum. <laughs> the devotee knows you have to keep going down. You have to keep bowing down. You see, that's why we bow down every day. When I came to the Hare Krishna temple, I thought, why do we? There's so much bowing down. I didn't notice. No need for yoga. <laughs> so many bowing down over there. In the morning program alone, so many obeisances. Then one devotee said, you need to become grounded. Because we're living with our head in the clouds. They say in English, you're living with your head in the clouds. Unrealistic perception of yourself. Go down. Be humble. So respect, very dangerous. And then pratisadi, if you get some popularity or some position. Uh, that's also, these, all these things are very, very dangerous. So here Chitra Ketu, he achieved the rule of the Vidyadara planet. He got a position. But he realized this is just intermediate. It's not the real thing. And therefore the devotee keeps moving. Uh, they go for the eternal assets. They're thinking bigger. When I read Bhagavad Gita, I thought, I read that verse, Krishna says, manaha sukeshu vigatas praha. Krishna says you have to tolerate distress and you have to tolerate happiness. When I read that, I was confused. Because I thought, distress, tolerate. That I understand. But why do you have to tolerate happiness? Tolerate happiness. Happiness is good. We want to be happy. But Krishna is saying you have to tolerate this lower type of uh, temporary happiness, temporary benefit to get the real thing. So, uh, Chitra Ketu in this verse is reminding us, yes, as you go on the path, so many uh, things may come, but don't be fooled. Keep walking. Think bigger. Uh, all the fame, all the, uh, all the position, all the prestige, all of that will go. You can't take your position with you after this life, but you can take your Seva Bhav with you. You can't take your beads with you, but you can take the taste you have for chanting the holy name. You can't take your books with you, not your library, not even your laptop, which has all the PDFs. But you can take the genuine realization that you've captured within your own heart, that you can take. So we have to go for the eternal assets, the real thing. And therefore, in Krishna consciousness, it's always very, very important. Every day, we have to remind ourselves, I need to go for the real thing. Because on the journey, uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati says, Kala kaler balina indriya veri varga, Shri bhakti marga iha kanta kakoti rutha, Ha ha kayami vikalam ke maham karomi, Chaitanya Chandraya Dinadya Kripam Karoshi. He says, uh, problem number one, Kala Kaler, I'm living in Kali Yuga, very difficult. Problem number two, Balina Indriya Vedi Varga, my senses and my mind are so strong. Problem number two. And he says, problem number three, 
Shri Bhakti Marga Iha Kanta Kakoti Rudha, this beautiful path of bhakti is spiked with many, many thorns. We're living in Kali Yuga, our mind and senses are very uncontrolled, and on this path of bhakti, there's so many ways in which one can injure themselves. Therefore, he says, Ha ha, payami vikalam kimaham karomi. Oh, what will I do? How will I survive? How will I achieve my destination? Chaitanya Chandra Yadi Nadia Kripam Karoshi. I'm praying to Chaitanya Chandra. Please give me your mercy. Please give me your grace. Only by this will I be able to perfect the path. So, here today, the sixth canto, Chitraketu is reminding us of this. That let us remain focused on what the ultimate goal of Krishna consciousness is. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Questions, comments? Is there a question? Okay, you answer show that then. If you ask in English, it would be good. If you're asking in Hindi, Maharaj, would you need a translation? Then I can think okay. Probably better. Okay. Hindi for us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can you please explain how to develop uh, the feeling of mature enthusiasm and what are the characteristic features of mature enthusiasm? Like uh, if someone is not having that mature enthusiasm in his heart, then what path he she must take to develop that? Thank you. The main thing that uh, is accompanied with enthusiasm to make it mature enthusiasm is patience. Therefore, utsahan, nishchayat, dhaiyat. If you're patient but you're not enthusiastic, that's the mode of ignorance. If you're enthusiastic but you're not patient, that's the mode of passion. Utsahamai. And if you're enthusiastic and patient together, tempered, then you can understand it's a much more mature type of enthusiasm because it recognizes that, yes, I'm hungry. Tatra Lolyam, you must be hungry. You must be enthusiastic, you must be eager because apimulya me kalam, that's the one price for getting Krishna consciousness. But at the same time, you have to be patient because we have to understand it's going to take time. Prabhu, I've been chanting for one year. Good. Keep chanting. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. We think, even sometimes we think, oh, 20 years, 30 years. There's a sense of, like, we take comfort in years. Of course, there's definitely, if someone has practiced many years, we honor that, we respect that. But even 30 years, 20 years, what is that in comparison to lifetimes of conditioning? So the enthusiasm to change has to be tempered with the patience. You have to un we have to under be ready. Krishna consciousness is a lifetime process. You have to be in it, they say in English, you have to be in it for the long run. You have to make a plan. This is my whole life. This is one life. What's one life? Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say that. You've given so many lives to Maya. Now give one life to Krishna. You think one life? <laughs> yeah, one life. That's what it will take. So not one year, not one decade, one life. One life of enthusiasm. <coughs> Why not? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is on your side. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, Felix and Mahalushin. Thank you so much Maharaj for these words. Maharaj, my question is like when we go through these uh, 
especially words of scriptures, Bhagavatam, and when, as you described the commentaries from Vishnu Chakra Thakur, sometimes or many times we are not able to translate translate that into our personal life. Especially you emphasize on wisdom should be breathing in our life so that we can breathe out. Can you give us any tips how we should see the wisdom so that we can reflect it in our own life, in our own spiritual life practically? I think you know the answer to this. <laughs> Vedic practice of studying is Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam. Nowadays what we do is Shravanam, Katanam, Pastanam. <laughs> We hear something, cut it, tell someone else, finished. <laughs> no, we have to think. We have to. In the beginning of Bhagavatam, he said this Bhagavatam is understood by th uh, thoughtful and honest people. We have to be very thoughtful. We have to be very honest. We have to do a lot of soul searching. We have to look deep within our heart. When we read a verse like this, we have to then go away from the class and ask ourselves, what are the intermediate side benefits that are taking my attention away? Then it becomes a living wisdom. Then it becomes wisdom which changes our life. Therefore, mananam, to constantly think, to constantly contemplate. Uh, to discuss with others, to apply it and cross-reference it with your own life, and then Nidhi Dhyasanam, do something with the knowledge. Yes, I read this, Saipan, what can I do? I need to, maybe I need to stop doing something, or maybe I need to start doing something. So, Shravanam, Mananam, Nidhi Dhyasanam, don't do Shravanam, Katanam, Pastanam. And even better, one devotee told me, if you can do Shravanam, Mopanam, Vashanam. <laughs> Along with Shravanam, mop the temple, wash the pots. In other words, along with your knowledge, we have to serve Krishna. Sevan Mukhe, Hijiva Do, Svayam Eva. Spuratyada. Otherwise, Ata Shri Krishna Nama Di Na Bhavet Gayam Indriya. You can't understand Krishna through these senses, but if you serve, oh yes, Seva transforms the senses, mind. You perceive things on a higher level. So there you go. Some ideas. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. My question is how one can overcome immature enthusiasm in devotional life. It's so similar. Prabhu asked what is the difference between immature enthusiasm and mature. So therefore I said be patient. Understand Krishna consciousness is long term. And associate with mature devotees. Therefore when mature devotees are there, they can just help you to be more balanced. Good association. Is that okay? I'm just thinking, shall we also give Mataji's a chance? Yeah, because you otherwise... have to cut it short. You have time. You can give it to the Mataji's afterwards. Okay, I, I am. Uh, it's, it's going with the, it's oh, it's going, going with the flow. Yeah, yeah. The river of the flow. <laughs> <laughs> the waves. Okay, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful class. Uh, Maharaj, you talked in detail about Taranga Rangani and that is what got me thinking a lot about the side benefits. Uh, you were also talking about uh, how we get uh, stuck in this thing, the false philosophies about susukham kattu magayam and then it should be joyfully performed. Uh, Maharaj, uh, one thing which uh, I think is that, which I have also tried to live is that artificially enunciating things and saying that I, I will not do anything for my pleasure 
and they should only be for Krishna's pleasure. And in the process, uh, what happens is that it does not work and it becomes dry. And on the other hand, if we try to, okay, now let me enjoy it as well, and I'm trying it, then we also, like you said, go with the flow and we might go it. So, what is the fine line between that and how should we try to balance out our understanding? <laughs> It's like playing kabaddi, <laughs> isn't it? You have to like move in that zone, and t but then not get captured. But then if you stay so much back, how you will ever, but if you go too much in. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, the uh, senses are like horses. The mind is like the reins, and the intelligence is the driver. And any driver, who knows if they ever drive horses that sometimes you have to pull and sometimes you also have to let them run if you only let them run or you only pull it doesn't work therefore you need to have a measure of discipline and uh, encouragement and some space Therefore, even when like children are growing up, you generally have a mother and a father. And generally what happens is the father gives a lot of discipline. And the mother gives a lot of love. Because you need discipline and you need love. You need discipline and you need kindness. So when you're deep trying to mold your own mind, it's like bringing up a kid. Our mind is like a kid. So it's like, you just have to think, if you had a kid tomorrow, good luck. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> no, they're nice, kids are nice. Uh, but it's, a, it's hard work. How will you bring that child up? Discipline, but not in such a heavy way, but at the same time, not just being, oh, do what you want to do. It's a balance. It's an art. Hare Krishna Mahathas, Dhanutana. So my question is, I am suffering from indecision disease, so what's the treatment for it? <laughs> <laughs> we have to look for sources of inspiration. When we don't know what to do, then we turn to Shastra. When we don't know what to do, we turn to the sadhus. When we don't know what to do, we turn to Krishna and we pray. At the end of the day, you have to make a decision. If you don't make a decision, the world will make a decision for you. <laughs> People think, no, no, I won't take any risk, I won't do anything. That's the biggest risk. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, he said, in a world that's constantly changing, the only strategy that's assured to fail is not to take a risk. It's like, imagine you're in quicksand, and then you say, but if I go to the north, this is a very dangerous weather. But if I go this way, there are dacoits. If I go this way, there's a cliff. If I go this way, there's some army. Anyway, I'll do the safe thing and just stay here. Mm, well, then you're going to sink for sure. So when all is said and done, you have to make a decision. Karishye, vachanam tava. Krishna told Arjun, I've given you the inspiration. Think about it. Take all the inspiration and then make a decision. And Arjun took the decision. Stito smi kat sandeha karishe vachanam tava. I'll do it. So be bold. 
I'll say one last thing that my spiritual master told me when making decisions. He was chastising me. He said, the problem with you is every time you make a decision, you're meditating on all the things that could go wrong. Why don't you start meditating on everything that could go right? Why don't you start getting excited? Why don't you get excited about all the amazing things that could happen if it works out? And then the decision doesn't become a burden, but the decision becomes an opportunity. But because we're always thinking, oh, it will go wrong, I'll fail, something will not. Then we're scared of making a decision. We should be excited. Decisions open the doors to a new destiny. Wonderful. That's the one thing that Krishna gave you that he never takes away. Your own free will. Can you imagine? The one thing that Krishna gives us that he never takes away is the one thing we then don't use. <laughs> oh no, I don't. No, Krishna said, I'm giving it to you. Use it. But use it with Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. And then you'll be successful. What I feel uh, that everything is so merciful and bestowing around me, but uh, I'm not able to perceive it and I'm not able to absorb it fully. Though everything is, though I wish to, but uh, still my mind is not able to take it. Thank you for being honest. So you're saying that you feel as though you're surrounded by so much spiritual opportunity, good association, wonderful temple, but we're not receiving it, we're not appreciating it. The mind can't perceive it. <coughs> we may not appreciate it, we may not have a deep uh, realization in our heart about how valuable this opportunity is, but we have intelligence. Because the Shastra is telling you, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasade Pain Bhakti Lata Beach. How many lifetimes, how many? Trials and tribulations, how many roller coasters, what did it take to get to this point? And we may say, yeah, I heard it, but it's not. I don't feel it in my heart. It doesn't matter what we feel. Right now, more important than our feelings is our intelligence, which is empowered by Shastra. And therefore, even if deep within us we don't realize and appreciate everything, on an intellectual level, on a, a shastric level, when we realize coming to this point in my life and having this opportunity, this is very, very rare. This is a golden opportunity. Then we utilize our intelligence and we wake up and we say, I can't waste it. I have to utilize it. I can't, uh, I can't forego this opportunity. How many? Very rare. Durlabha manava janama. So, when the feeling is not there, then we rely on the intelligence. Yogye sankirtaner praye yajanti hi sumedasha. If you're very intelligent, even if you don't feel it, you'll give your heart and life to the holy name of Krishna. But, uh, <laughs> There's always a but. <laughs> <laughs> heart is clouded with feelings and uh, how to clear the heart. <coughs> <coughs> Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridyanta Stohya Badrani Vidanoti Suritsatam 
sorry to keep giving you verses and Shastra. I can give you my opinion, but it won't count for much. But Shastra is saying, if you constantly, by your intelligence, apply yourself to the process, all that is troublesome within the heart will be almost completely destroyed and irrevocable loving service to the Supreme Lord will be established. But we have to apply ourselves. You have to be determined, you have to be disciplined. We all have to, me included, all of us. Hi Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, thank you so much for all the Shabbatam <coughs> classes which you have given in the last three days. So, uh, my question is from yesterday's class, Maharaj. That is, cry, uh, cry for Krishna. So, uh, it is related to, uh, you said that if you will not cry for Krishna, then you have to cry for, the world will make you cry. It is like this. So, I feel whenever I am in a situation where I am not able to do anything to means come out from that situation, it's a painful situation if it is there. So, at that moment, I cry. I go to Krishna, I go to Radharani, I cry, Oh Gopinath, please help me, help me to come out from this situation. I cry day and night to get out from that situation, <laughs> Prabhupada. Then I go to Prabhupada and I I pray to Prabhupada, please um, help me to come out from this situation. It is giving me so much of pain. At that moment, I realize that my chanting is very intense. I'm remembering Krishna, I'm crying and shedding tears, and then I'm uh, listening Bhagavatam classes, I'm shedding tears, I'm relating the, I'm relating the situ my situation uh, and getting the solutions probably, uh, the solutions are there. Then I'm breathing, I'm crying, having prasadam, I'm could crying. Give it in brief, could you please the question, please? Many devotees waiting. Have a brief conversation. Sure. So um, my question is like end of the time, end of the day, I'm thinking that yes, I'm crying for myself, not for Krishna. But at that time, in that painful situation, I'm uh, more remembering Krishna than the other days. So, uh, but that cry is not the genuine cry. So, what is and how to bring that genuine cry for Krishna and the love for Krishna? My Thank you. Start where you are. Akama sarva kamova moksha kama udharati divraina bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. Even if you have sarva kama, even if you have so many agendas with which you're coming before Krishna, at least you're coming before Krishna. So start there. But then later on, we have to become more mature. We have to become purified. You just have to treat, we have to treat Krishna as a person. If someone only came to you every single day crying, crying with their problems, I mean, you'd help them. But after some time, you might even start cancelling their calls, you know? It's like, how many times this person just always complaining, always crying? But in the beginning, if someone comes, yes, okay, of course, we want to help. The material world is a difficult place. Krishna knows. But how long are we going to just start coming in front of Krishna with our emotional tears? Neither it will satisfy Krishna, nor it will satisfy our own heart. After some point, we just have to realize... This world is, uh, it's, just a, it's just a computer game. It's not real. Therefore, even if your eyes have tears of emotions when you come in front of Krishna, meditate on Krishna's smile. That's what is said in the third canto. Hasam harer avanatali kativra soka some mohanaya rajitum nijamaya yasya bru mandalam munikrite makaradvajasya. Come in front of Krishna and meditate on his smile. And if you meditate on Krishna's smile, 
Then the ocean of tears, Sokashru Sagara, will be dried up by Krishna's smile. And if you meditate on Krishna's eyebrows, then even the power of Cupid will be counteracted. So, we can't remain, like we begin where we are, but we've got to keep moving forward. We've got to keep improving. That's, this is a movement. It's the Krishna consciousness movement. We've got to keep moving, improving. Hare Krishna Maharaji, please accept my most humble obeisances. My question is also from your yesterday class. Yesterday you said that a perfect bhajnarandi can become a perfect ghosnarandi too. So in my case, what I see is that when I do sadhana, reading, hearing, chanting, association and all these things, my consciousness is very high, very pure, I mean, I as a high, high feel. But when I do a physical services and seva, like group distribution and management and all other services, my consciousness will be contaminated. I mean, I feel that uh, this is a bad type of consciousness when I do sadhana and all. So, how can you understand this? <coughs> See, it's not just about how we feel in a service. It's about what will please Krishna. Therefore, sometimes we may be doing a service. Uh, it may be very, very difficult. We may not feel like we're remembering Krishna. But still that endeavour to do it for Krishna's pleasure because the Vaishnavas have asked you to do it because it's something which is needed that in itself causes you to derive great spiritual advancement. One devotee Prabhupada told him to go to the Russian-speaking communist countries to preach and Prabhupada, and he said, but Prabhupada, there's nothing vegetarian to eat there. Prabhupada said, eat meat. The devotee said, but what about my consciousness? Prabhupada said, to hell with your consciousness. <laughs> now, let's just put a footnote on that story. That's not that we should take unnecessary unless it's... But Prabhupada was making the point that sometimes it's not about how we feel. When you make a sacrifice for the Krishna consciousness movement, if you go out and you distribute books and it's difficult, but you do it because you know Srila Prabhupada would be happy, then it doesn't matter if you're struggling out there with the mind because your own determination to make that sacrifice is already pleasing to Krishna and Srila Prabhupada. So, we are... We have to serve. This is a practical movement. We're not a movement. Srila Prabhupada said, be like me. In the morning I read the Bhagavatam and in the afternoon I go to the bank. Be spiritually deep and then be active in the world because the world needs devotees to be active. Okay. Hare Krishna Swamiji, Dengar Pranam. Uh, Swamiji, you said uh, the respect which people gave, gave us, but uh, then we fell down. So shall we tell them that uh, please don't give us so much respect? <laughs> if you do, they'll probably think you're being humble and they'll give you more respect. <laughs> Just your servant. 
whatever you want. If you tell me to go, I go. If you tell me to stay, I stay. And if you tell me to go, go in this. <laughs> But just one other thing I'll say on this Mataji's question about respect. You see, when someone gives you respect and you realize, I am not this, actually their respect should make you more humble. It should make you more humble. Because you should realize, in Krishna consciousness, your weakness should become your biggest strength. That's the art. Make your weakness your biggest strength because your weakness causes you to realize nothing. Who am I? I need to, I need to, I need to be at the feet of the Vaishnavas. Who am I? So when they respect you, realize I have to go down. That sometimes irritates also us, like every time. One question per person, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, Ramakrishnam. Thank you so much for another beautiful gem to all the cards. But Maharaj, my question is, how can we overcome spiritual uh, regrets in our lives? Oftentimes we compare our regrets, means the real things, with the authentic ideas that we have set in our mind. And if we go haywire with the set standards, that brings really you so much more depression and negativity. That was very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> the essence of it was how do we overcome regrets, as I understood. Spiritual regrets. Spiritual regrets. <coughs> See, in Krishna consciousness, you have the power by Krishna's grace. To decide this is not how the story is going to end. At any moment in your life, you always have the chance to take it where you want to take it. In Krishna consciousness, there's nothing you can do that brings you to a dead end. And therefore, there's, the regrets don't constantly linger within our heart. We use them. We become wise but then we realize all the opportunity is there why do we hear the story of Dhritarashtra in the Bhagavatam because it helps us to realize oh my god even if after all of that I can still save it at the end why do we hear the story of Ajamil to help us realize even if I messed it up completely I can still change it so the Bhagavatam is a book of mistakes basically in the first canto, Parikshit makes a mistake. In the second canto, Brahmaji makes a mistake. In the fourth canto, Dhruva makes a mistake. In the fifth canto, Bharat makes a mistake. In the sixth canto, Jamil makes a mistake. But they all recover. Because they know that you never come to a dead end. It doesn't matter how bad you are. Nam no hi, yavati, shakti. You can't measure the power of the holy name of Krishna. It can counteract more sins than you are able to perform. Don't test it out. <laughs> Take it. Shastra Praman. So you can always change it. No regret. <laughs> Mike is not on the page. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the mercy flowing. My question is also from the yesterday's lecture. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it got stuck in my mind. So please forgive me for that. Uh, there was a question from a Prabhu yesterday and uh, it was like, if we have no love for Krishna, like if I am not, I don't have the memory of being with Krishna, like how it is. 
So how I am going to develop love for him? It is said in the scriptures, I have to hear, I have to constantly chant, I have to associate with the devotees, but with this weak mind and no intelligence, how can I have this memory of being with Krishna, loving him and uh, developing a love for him without having that glimpse of uh, what that love is like? Uh, well, first of all, I don't think you don't have any love. I think that's a long, uh, little bit harsh. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhya Kabunoi Shravanadi Sudha Chite Kare Udoi is there, just covered. I think it helps to understand in Krishna consciousness that you already have love. Because Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, Sadhya Kabuno, you're not getting that love from any. it's already within you, you have it. But it just needs to be awakened, it just needs to be unlocked. You want to have a glimpse of Krishna? Yeah, serve. And you'll get a glimpse of Krishna. Just ask all these wonderful devotees who have gone out on book distribution, how many times they saw Krishna? Yes, Krishna becomes very active. Srila Prabhupada said, if you go out and you distribute books, one day you'll turn around and Lord Chaitanya will be right there to embrace you. Amen. If I look at my own insignificant, useless life, I have to humbly share with you that the most magical, mystical, memorable, moving moments in my spiritual life have been on book distribution. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can also share Krishna with others and maybe you'll see Krishna. Not maybe, you will. Krishna is there. So we don't need to try like disempower ourselves by making it such a high ideal. No, it's too high. I will never get there. It's Kali Yuga, my mind. One time there was a devotee who was saying, Oh, Kali Yuga, Prabhu. It's difficult, you know, you know, Kali Yuga Kata comes. Prabhu, it's difficult out there. It's Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga. And then there was one sadhu and he came and he said, Kali Yuga? Kali Yuga? He said, this is not Kali Yuga. This is Chaitanya Yuga. <laughs> so we can't always be like, oh no, it's hard. I'm never going to do it. I'm so fallen, worm in the stool. <laughs> More sinful than Jagai and Madhai. But then what does Kaviraj Goswami say in the very next verse? But I got the mercy of Nityananda. So, Nityananda Trayodashi is coming. <laughs> Nityananda is drunk. Full intoxication. When someone is intoxicated, you can ask them for anything and then get <laughs> I don't think in uh, Delhi you do it. But you know the book distributors in London? I should not say this actually. <laughs> Best time to distribute is the night time. Because <laughs> then uh, people are a little clouded, you know, in the discrimination. <laughs> For you. Yes, why not? So it's a great Nityananda is there. Nityananda told Krishna as Kaviraj Goswami, Are Are Krishna Das, Nakara Habhai, Vrindavana Yahataha, Sarvala Bhyahai. Oh Krishna Das, Nakara Bhai, don't be afraid, don't have any fear, just go to Vrindavan. Everything you can. So Prabhupada opened up the whole spiritual world. Prabhupada is the ambassador of Vrindavan. He opened up the whole spiritual world. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, you're so close to Vrindavan. Vrindavan Ayahata. Go to Vrindavan. That was so fortunate. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, thank you for your lecture. Uh, it's an honor to thank you. speak. Oh, that's a British accent. It is. I am very new to Krishna consciousness. Um, I left my corporate job in the UK in last year. I came to India, spent a couple of months at um, Gavadan Nika village. Um, I've had the great fortune of spending lots of time associating with very senior devotees. Oh, right. um, been to Bin and now I'm here. Um, my question is do you have any advice for a new um, devotee? Um, and I have a very good, I have a very strong connection with Prabhupada and I, huh? I want to serve him. I, I want to know how I can serve him best as a new devotee. Um, and at some point I will return to the UK. Um, I feel a little bit anxious about that because my... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> my family and friends are um, not Krishna conscious and I'm wondering if you have any advice for returning to and my life there. Thank well, you very much. Your name is? Uh, my name is Grace. Grace. Oh, good name. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should give Grace a round of applause for being so brave and <laughs> the Yeah, thank you for being brave. Fortune favors the brave. I guess it's not India t easy to come to India and uh, deal with the corruption. <laughs> <laughs> amongst other beautiful things. Um, so your question was, uh, what would my advice be for someone, on a newcomer on the journey? Uh, the first thing is, I don't think you're a newcomer. We understand that um, we're picking up in this life from another life. I don't think you could have come to India. I don't think you could have come to Vrindavan just like that without some prior background in a previous chapter of life somewhere along the journey. Who's old and who's new? In one sense we're all new and in another sense we're all old. This life's just a chapter, so you're just carrying on. And um, I think what you said in terms of advice, what I could, I guess, offer to you is just have really good friends in Krishna consciousness people you relate to, people who are like-minded, people who understand you, who love you, and people who can give you advice on the journey. Nowadays, if I look at my spiritual life, I think the greatest wealth that I have in my spiritual journey is my friendships with devotees. Because through that friendship, everything you require in your journey comes. So that's what I try to do nowadays, although I'm a difficult person to get along with. Try to make a lot of friends on the journey, and then it becomes uh, a lot easier. And going back to the UK, yeah, it's challenging. You'll be surrounded by a different, uh, a different society with a different value system, which works in a different way. Um, but even in the UK, you'll find your spiritual oasis, you'll find spiritualists who you have company with and communities that you can connect to. We have the manor in London, so you're welcome. We have programs there where you can come and spend some time, um, and maybe that will be inspiring for you. So yeah, wish you the best on the journey, and uh, yeah, safe travels in the land of extremes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.